So you can just use it like this. You don't have to put it up. Okay. I just okay. keep it here. No, just keep it. Since we'll be talking around. We start? Good morning and uh, welcome to the idea session of today. Um, today we'll be talking about emerging technology. But before I do that, a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Engineer Abdullati Baliu. And um, here in the uh, colleague studio, we have our colleagues and they can just take introduction as well. So we'll be looking at emerging technologies and also um, some of the people behind these emerging technologies. And uh, we'll be talking about some of the uh, so-called characteristics, which we refer to them as the DNAs of these people. Uh, so quickly, I'll start from my left, Ibrahim. Yeah, my name is uh, Ibrahim, I'm Ibrahim. Nice to be here. All right. I helped uh, this activity bring a fun and a uh, very exciting one, and uh, to impact your knowledge and uh, understanding more. All right, thank you very much, Ibrahim, and also Emmanuel. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Ebro. I'm a PhD student in base. We are looking forward to having an exciting moment to do this. Excellent. Thank you very much. And also, we have Ibrahim. My name is Ibrahim. I'm doing my PhD in faculty. I'd like to talk with the Imagine Technology and Biology, as a player in Portal Run. Excellent. So, we have also Abdul. Uh, my name is Abdul Malik. We are going to discuss about emerging technologies and how they have impacted. Excellent. So uh, please, uh, if you have questions, just drop it in the comments and we're able to take them as we discuss. It's going to be a very interactive session and um, I hope you like it. At the end of this discussion, I think the takeaway is for you to know um, what emerging technologies are. Um, we're going to discuss that also. Um, I don't know if there's a way you people can also uh, talk to us, we'll hear you. But if not, we'll still continue like that. And also, we give you some of the examples of what emerging technologies are. And also, we'll be looking at a chart called the Gartner chart. And um, the most recent is that of the 2023. We'll look into that and try to show you the stages that these emerging technologies go through before they become you know, uh, extinct or also survive you know, the reality of time. And finally, we'll be talking about some of these innovators behind these um, emerging technologies, and um, I hope you, you enjoy it. For now, I don't think we'll have any questions that come up, so we'll just go straight into it. Uh, so let's hear from the participants. 
Um, just drop the comment on the chat. What do you understand about emerging technologies? Anyone from the chat, um, please feel free to drop your understanding of emerging technology. But uh, before we read some of your responses, um, colleagues, uh, what do you understand about emerging tech? Emerging technologies are Muslim technologies that are already uh, that are already coming up or are already in existence, but have not been uh, have not been pushed into reality or uh, have not been successful on its own uh, in the industry at all. So, because have, uh, uh, some few years back, we had an issue of uh, AI, 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 AI. AI was an emerging technology, but now AI is here to stay. Oh, I see. AI is here to stay. It's here to stay. It, it has become. Stay. It has emerged already. It's, it's no longer emerging. emerging. It's no longer emerging. Okay. Once uh, there are, there are previous stages who, which we will later go through, the uh, uh, emerging technologies have to go through. But well, with the emergence of AI and everything, it has passed through those stages and it's here to stay. Yeah. And I don't think everyone. <laughs> there's no one else who is not using. Uh, is not using AI. Oh, I see. Yes. Yes, sir. So now it has come to stay. We have the likes of ChatGPT, we have BAD, we have Germany. So many tools you can use these days that are also top notch. And also, if you look around us, you see the time when there's a hype for EVs, electric vehicles, you know, um, uh, sophisticated energy storage. And now, you know, it has come to stay. And they are going through their life cycle that we'll be discussing about. So I don't know if there are responses from the group. But uh, we hope that you understand what emerging technologies is. And also, we still have emerging technologies in different fields. Um, Brian, from biology, can you give us some of the emerging technologies that you understand? So, Yeah, and, uh, the emerging technology in biology, many technologies have the potential to have a significant and also play an important role, the effect on biodiversity and how to sustain it. And also, the biodiversity is also used more and more as an input of cutting edge of technical application, which include like CRISPR Cas9, synthetic of DNA, evolution under direction, and artificial cells, and also the engineering metabolism also play an important role in the emerging technology. Oh, excellent. So, when you talk about technology, it doesn't boy to just take alone, you look into all space of you know realities, you have places. Um, into the software engineering, you look into the hardware, you look into biotech, you look into nanotech. There are so many of them out there, and um, I think um, Abdul, we should be able to add some few ones, you know, to the discussion. Yeah, um, so uh, there, are, there are multiple examples, there are multitudes of uh, emerging technologies in the market now. We have augmented reality, virtual reality, the blockchain, the cryptocurrency, which are, which are all like I'm sure most of you, most of you guys have uh, Binance on your phone and you're, you're doing one or two competitions with it. Uh, so, uh, there's IoT as well, the, uh, there's blockchain and all that. So um, I will just briefly uh, jump into the Gardner's hype cycle. We have, uh, there are four stages in this, uh, in this uh, cycle. We have the peak of inflated expectation and uh, the throw of uh, plateau of productivity. We have the throw of disengagement, and, uh, and uh, we have one other one. So just before you go into the Gartner chart, yeah. which I will show later, I think we're just trying to make sure our participants understand yeah, the, concept. the concept of emerging technologies. Um, I don't know how many people on the call have used um, chat GPT. I think before now, a lot of people are even skeptical. They don't even know that something like that exists and it has emerged, and this has begun to evolve. Um, Microsoft have come up with their co-pilot, and it's doing a lot, and they are still modifying it from co-pilot to co-pilot pro, uh, that can actually do uh, tasks for you. Just looking at the way you do work, is gonna simulate how you perform your tasks, and able to even carry out those tasks for you. And reply emails even, executive emails. Your style of writing the emails is already you know, you know, taking in as a data, input data, and um, they are able to do all these things for you without, um, you know, human image. So um, I don't know. Did you get any definition from the audience about emerging technologies? Any examples? Yeah. Can you please read them out? 
So let's see that we're together and uh, we have people interacting with us. So if you can read that out, so what do we have? Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, so just hold on, it's going to put me on the live feed. I see the interaction as we go. So um, I'm impressed that we're able to get some of these um, uh, emerging technology um. examples from you. But we'll be going to detail about the Gartner um, chart to tell you these phases that this emerging technology go through. Um, from the point of uh, innovation trigger um, to the peak of uh, uh, inflated expectations to droughts or so, uh, resolution and to the, uh, to the plateau of productivity. So we'll be looking at this in details and my colleagues are here to actually share ideas about those things you see at that stage. Uh, some of you might have noticed these things but you, you maybe um, passively you don't actually see that okay this is what is happening and uh, we'll be looking at this uh, as well. So uh, that being said, thank you very much. So I've seen example, okay, very good. Um, Eclima Bello, AI, Chat GPT, which is good. Um, well, they were all emerging at that point, but right now they've emerged and they are going into that yourself. So um, one, uh, I would just like to show you something interesting, you know. Um, We had the chat open up, so I'll just try to bring that up. I don't know if you can all see my screen, and I'm trying to show you what they call the high circle. Um, for every emerging technology, it goes through this circle, really. Um, from the innovation trigger, which is the first part of it, um, that's when people uh, start to, you know, talk about it, the media begin to do the propagandas, and you know venture capitalists which are they're everywhere they start to bring in investments to put on things public demonstrations you know public demonstrations so i would like to take the the, the 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 credit of doing the talking but i would like to pass it to my colleagues so just expantiate about what you think these stages represent you know so if you look at the y axis you see the expectation and you see several uh, technologies being lined up there so meaning that before zero, these technologies were emerging, right? And when time zero starts, they've emerged already, and they begin to go through the phases. So this is where we see the reality. If these technologies succeed, or go extinct. So some of them become successful, sustainable, and they exist for a long, long time. We know when the Facebook came on board, and now it's become something that we do every time and all that. But it's no longer an emerging tech, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's there to stay, yeah. and people are enjoying it. Um, also, when you talk about the... Um, the pardon? 5G. The 5G, when it was coming, uh, to the extent well, that people were talking about... about it and the they don't have information about what it's meant to achieve, and they're mixing it with COVID. Infrastructure was going on in Lagos, and we're like, these guys want to plan 5G. You know, a lot of people, to the extent that people were consuming salt out of ignorance. <laughs> so, right now, so we look into the Gartner chart, and for every emerging technology, they go through these stages. And I would like to start with um, Ibrahim. So, just, yeah, let me try to zoom this. Uh, we'll try to look into this uh, chart and we'll be discussing it. I hope you can see very well. Uh, we'll start with the innovation trigger. So, colleagues, yeah. innovation trigger. Let's take uh, cyber security, oh, which I is see. a field I'm, uh, I'm passionate about. You can see cyber security started from the innovation trigger, and it's a concept that is already in existence, and it's already it's used everywhere. Yes, threats are continuing to emerge every day, every day, every day. If you keep on receiving info, this uh, system has been attacked, this uh, company has been hacked, a lot of information has been stolen, it's on the dark web. But with the idea of emerging technology, we, we, which has uh, looked at this concept right from the stage of uh, the zero year where it started, mm -hmm. we looked at, okay, this is an innovation trigger that must be looked at. And then it's, uh, there, were, there were various research, there were various uh, concepts that were initiated and all. Well, 
you can see now that cyber security is a concept that is being used everywhere. I mean, for every company you have, you have to be cyber secure. You have to protect your organization from any threats that can affect your information, your personal data, your any information you have about your your clients, your uh, your staffs. You have to protect this information. And then there are various laws also that are in innovation that you have to use to protect the, these companies. Mm -hmm. So if you don't protect them, if you don't protect your clients, you don't protect yourself, you don't you push all their information and you could be fined by the governments <laughs> for, for, for not handling uh, the information uh, correctly. So, uh, and then the concept of generative cyber security AI, we could speak various. There are various uh, components. Uh, they are very looking at uh, generative cyber security AI. We see that uh, if you go online now, uh, you search uh, Pentest, uh, Pentest Chat GBT, you see that even the concept of AI is being incorporated into cyber security to further provide uh, various uh, concepts that will be used to protect the organization. So uh, let's look at my colleagues who also look at various other components of uh, yeah. So uh, this before thing. Emmanuel talk about that, I would just like to summarize your explanation of that innovation trigger in the sense that these are the breakthrough when they've emerged, right? Yes. And um, product is launched. Yes. Um, usually Apple is fond of this. They go into, you know, a lot of people line up to see what's uh, now, uh, what do you call it? Uh, cooks have to say about um, the new mobile phones and stuff. And uh, usually, before it used to be Steve Jobs, I see a lot of people queue up just to understand what this new technology is there to do. So, you have a lot of startups that come on board, and a lot of things start to happen. And also, you have venture capitalists who skyrocket, and you see people will be showing interest on these things and they want to, you know, be part of it. They invest. They don't know what they are going into. Even if it's the devil or the the blue sea, so they just step into it and uh, things begin to go. But at this stage, actually, it's experimental. Nothing, you know, solid yet. So that's been said. I think. Thank you very much, Ibrahim. Uh, let's take Emmanuel. Uh, peak of inflated expectation. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you if you take a very good look at the charts, you'll see. Um, you will see lines. Please, can you go down? Okay. Can you go? All right. Okay. So you will see the, the first line. Every um, technology that has not exceeded this first line is still in the innovat innovation trigger. So the peak of uh, inflated expectation is the second stage. So when a technology is here, there is excitement about this technology. The hype is everywhere. People want to um, people want to use this technology. They have not placed their hands on it because it just came out from the demonstration stage. People want to know about this technology. The expectation for this technology is really high at this at this um, um, at this stage. And um, most times, you know, people overhype what the technology can even do <laughs> at. at um, at this stage of um, uh, peak of inflated expectation. Wow. Yeah. So, will you just say at this stage, people just start to talk anyhow, you don't even know what it has yes. to offer, yes. and you yes. see a lot of um, media propaganda, you know, depending on which company is trying to lead the chat, yes. and people begin to, you know, you know, talk, talk, talk. And, you know, the generative AI tool are in this stage right now, because you see a lot of things, um, a lot of people will be like, the capabilities is infinite, they can do a lot of things, even though they cannot do it actually at now. We still know that they still battle with that uh, hallucination, right, which is still there. And sometimes these things that they come up with might not be true. So what is there for you that don't know, you, you know, take them. So the takeaway from this stage is that you have excitement from people, both the users, you know, the people producing them. There's media, media boost, a lot of media boost, people talking about it. Anywhere you see, you see a generative AI tool can help you do this um, on X, on Facebook, Instagram. You just see these tools, you know, be popping up and down. And more people are using this product at this time. That, okay, I can't be the person left behind. Something I forgot. Um, you know, for stages of any technology, there are early adopters and also there are people that come very, very late. I don't know which stage of 
of those people are you guys on the call, but you can just say that, okay, if you are the first people that have used Gen AI as far as 2023, right? You can post it there. If you just adopt it this year, you can as well post it there. Let us know. But these are things that, uh, these are things that uh, have emerged and you know, people are still using. And you see more people using this product. But the thing is, the products have limitations in terms of the requirement and what it has to offer. So thank you very much, Emmanuel, for you know, detailing this out. And um, let's go through the chart again. This is a deep. I think it's, you, call it, uh, you call it the trout of the solution. So um, you want to talk about it, uh, Abdul? Yep. Um, so uh, the trial of disillusionment is, a, is an initial excitement stage of technology where the, the hype starts feeding away. So this is a stage in which people have already amplified the whole concept of the products and the services, and then at the end of the day, it starts to go down because of one or two reasons. People are realizing the limitations and the constraints behind uh, the services and, uh, and all that. There is a natural part of uh, the technological cycle, Gantner's hype cycle. Uh, it allows further refinement, learning, and uh, eventual progress with time. Um, so I would like to keep it. All right, so thank you very much saying that. You know, at this stage is, um, that excitement that started at the beginning start to wear off. Like, okay, it cannot actually do this thing. We thought it could do this. And uh, people begin to, you know, uh, lose interest. Interest begin to drop. And um, you see Elo Adopter provide the real reports. I've used this thing, it's not working. Especially, you know, when it comes to our context here, that it's not what it's meant to, to it's not doing what it's meant to do, yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah. And people begin to, like, lose hope. There'll be a real report. At this time, the investment or the investors are keen about seeing what happened to their money. You know, people already put in money and they want to see what is actually going on. And we are not getting the return that we expect. So what can we do differently? So at this stage, a lot of them go extinct. That, you know, people begin to go. But the ones that are really, really rugged will go through and that's when we go into the slope of enlightenment. So, I don't know, um, colleagues, you want to talk about that? Yeah, the beauty of it is it's a temporary cycle. It's not uh, permanent. You can uh, either go extinct or uh, find a breakthrough from there. Uh, examples of these technologies are, uh, let's say, when crypto start, uh, cryptocurrency started at first, people thought, oh, um, why, why should I put my money in a decentralized environment where there's no uh, physical hub where I can uh, question or uh, or maybe uh, I can engage when there is a need for it. And um, uh, next we will go to the slope of enlightenment, maybe. Okay, yeah, yeah. To so the just, just to add to that, so that um, slope of enlightenment, um, you see, I see that some of you on the call made mention that the early adopters, they'll see the initial benefits really for using those tools. Um, people that are used to writing very long letters can get it done with the generative AI tool, right? So they don't have to worry about drafting letter or spend hours and hours trying to see how to write a very clean, error-free letter. The tools can do it for them. So benefit begins to emerge. And also, um, people now start to understand what the innovation is, really. Um, so what these people have done, uh, people now begin to you know, dissect them and uh, domestify them for people to understand, really what these tools are all about. So at this stage, you, they, they, they explore the benefit and people begin enlightened. So in total, slope of enlightenment is just awareness, people begin to see benefits and all that. But there's a final stage, and um, we will take this one, which is the plateau of productivity. Okay. At plateau of productivity, people tend to see how productive the technology is, the benefit of the technology, and um, at this stage, this is where well, people start adopting the technology and the technology has come to stay at this stage. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Example of that is the use of laptops. Mm. Yeah. Uh, example of that is the use of mobile phones or laptops. Mm. Now, uh, you know, some people are cynical about 
laptops before, but now Thank it's you. widespread. Now it's widespread and everyone is, yeah. Yeah, is into it. It has come to stay. Yeah. We have accepted it as, as part of our life. So at, the, at this stage, the technology can also disappear. <laughs> one, one, one common example is five, ten years ago, everybody was using iPad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was a hype for iPad. Yeah. Or iPod. Yeah, yeah iPad. <laughs> yeah. 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 But now I, you barely see anybody having iPad because mobile mobile phone have replaced the uh, the iPad technology. Yeah. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. So adding to that, adding to the idea of uh, it disappears. Yeah. We could see uh, technology going through various stages. Yeah. There was a time we were using a uh, 1G, 2G, 3G, and unfortunately now we are in the area of uh, 5G, okay. whereby things can be done more effectively. You browsing, you accessing information can be at the speed of light, can be at this thing. And uh, we know uh, technologies are still at a certain stage. Maybe I, even me and myself, I, I can say I'm using a 5G, apart from my laptop that is a 5G device. <laughs> I still have some other 4G devices. But we see that technologies keep on emerging, we keep on adopting, we keep on going through various stages. And then finally, we have a plateau of productivity whereby this technology have come to stay and then they are very effective for everyone in the world to use for any tax they want to carry out. Yeah, so just to recap this whole um, chat that we discussed with you is that uh, depending on the type of technology, it could move like speed of light through the, the circle and some of them can move very slowly like a dinosaur, you know, try to crawl till the end, right? But they do pass through these stages. And the truth is, um, there is a social media page before, back in the days. It's called uh, MySpace. Is it still existing? No. <laughs> what happened to it? <laughs> so, so, so did anybody on the call uh, understand MySpace? Have you ever thought about it? You know, what happened to it? And people will be like, OK, now you see that you have places like X, you know, and every day you see it evolves and you had things to it. They had the but, PBM messenger. Yes, so, so, so now we've talked about all these things. As of today, if I'm to ask a question to you audience that is ChatGBT emerging technology today? So let me see your response. Is it that it's yes or no, no, yes? I, I, I'm happy to read that. So that's the first question. And the second one is the model that the algorithm that is running inside is artificial intelligence, like the natural language processing algorithm that's running, is it emerging technology? So what I expect to see is just put ChatGPT, yes or no, then you put your um, NLP, yes or no. So we'll be able to see that. So just don't put yes or no, just say, um, ChatGPT, yes, emerging technology, and also you have the natural, the natural process, language processing is either emerging technology, um, yes or no. So we would like to see that. Uh, people say yes, 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 but I will tell you if it is correct or not at the end. But talking about that, let's go to what we want you to grab or understand. Um, we will also like to touch base on um, these innovators, right, that came up with these emerging technologies, uh, there could be anyone, but they had this thing because they have some certain characteristics. Uh, we'll be looking at them, and we'll be discussing that in details. Um, a lot of things have been said about innovator DNA. So we'll be looking at this DNA, what makes them become very creative and productive, and also be able to change our lives. Um, I don't know for you, but the you know, generative AI tool is something that is very, very excellent for me. It's doing a lot of job for me, and it's saving my time. So time is precious, time is money. So if you can get a tool to support you to save time, definitely you have to, to use it. So I'm seeing a lot of responses. I'm so excited because I see that uh, you people are following and you are, you are also paying attention. So. Innovators and their DNAs. Who want to start? Right? Yeah. So just to, to, to just give you an example is that um, there was a research that was done by some 
um, interesting folks that carry out excellent, they carry out excellent work and research across a lot of innovators, life of uh, Steve Jobs, uh, life of um, um, Jeff, Bezos. Jeff Bezos, the Amazon, a lot of them. So they interview over 2,000 executives and they try to find out what are those things that they do differently that we on our day to day we don't do. And these things make them different. They become innovative. And they were able to summarize all these things into what they call the um, discovery skills of innovators. And there are five of them. So we are five of us, so I'll just say the first one, which is associating. Association, right? Mm -hmm. Then um, maybe we take one one and we'll be able to, you know, cut across the entire five. And we can now discuss them and uh, how you can apply these things to your day to day. Right, and this thing you don't have to be born with them, you can actually cultivate them. Um, if you understand the concept, you can actually cultivate them. So, um, I don't know who want to add on the second. Mm. Uh, uh, based on uh, the attributes of, uh, of an innovator that was discussed, uh, that we are trying to get to now, uh, we see that uh, every innovator that is in existence, like of Steve Jobs, uh, Stephen Wozniak, every one of them. They all have a certain DNA. That they all have a certain characteristics that that, that are impacted in their everyday life. Uh, we also have the concept of uh, questioning. Every innovator that is in existence question an idea. They don't just meet, uh, bring an idea and then they just go through like that. You question that same idea. Uh, when uh, when uh, Steve Jobs came in. He saw that most uh, most computers that were being used were used in a lab, 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 lab. So he said that why must the computers be used in the lab? Why don't we create a concept whereby computers will be able to be used by even we individuals here? Yeah. We see that thank God now nowadays you see laptops, laptops here, yeah, laptops here, yeah, computers everywhere and uh, everywhere you can find it. Most of uh, the the idea was that he questioned why uh, computers were always used in the lab. Why, why, why can't uh, individuals that are outside the lab also be or also have the 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 the, 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 the knowledge the, the capability to also use a computer? So for every innovator, he must be able to question. He must be able to question that. Oh, why is this idea like this? Why is this idea like this? What can I do better to make it a successful idea? So going to the next stage, we have uh, Mr. Manuel who talk about it. Yeah, so just to um, put the context, it's like uh, innovators are different from other people because they've perfected these discovery skills, and it's five of them. You have the first one, which is association, and the second one, which is discovery, and you have the questioning, which is part of it. You have the observe, ob observation that people that observe, and you have the experimentation and also networking. So why association becomes the bedrock, like a, the DNA that sees these skills together, people that are very, very innovative are able to creatively, you know, interact with people from different background, bring ideas from different field, like Steve Jobs, his idea of calligraphy, you know, likes for meditation, and also more cities bends in terms of how it was neatly built, came up with the idea of the iPhone, right? You see a, a phone that is looking very silky in terms of, you know, the graphics are very, very rich and also, you know, so that's what they used to think about. And they ask questions, critical questions, like what if you do it this way? What if this does not exist? You understand what will happen? So they have inquisitive mindset, this mindset that makes them to ask question, to change the status quo. So questioning, questioning, questioning will definitely lead you to something new. Thank you for sharing the association and also talking about questioning. So observation. Okay. At, at this um, uh, observation stage, innovate, innovators are very observant. They observe humans be, human behavior. They observe their environment. They observe what people say. You know, most times, as a result of people's frustration, they they innovate something to um, they innovate something to improve how the current 
um, um, how the current technology is uh, how the current technology current technology is working and how to improve it. This will come based on observation. You know when um, we had the smartphone with about eight gigabytes <laughs> memory space. And that was like... That was like very, <laughs> very, very, yeah, that was very, very big. So, but they tend to observe people's behavior. Oh, we needed more space to save more. So they came up with a system. I'm not, I'm not taking away the business part. Side of the box to go out there to, to go look for, you know, something very good. So experimentation, yeah. Um, I would like to talk on... Um, Mm. It also encourages Eric's tolerance. Where by the atmosphere, where experimenting with novel ideas is welcome. Also, interfering with food experimenting at the center of all where they do. They are, and also, the unconventional response in which the network may professionally want to meet. And also, some, some, and also someone who can provide them with resources they need, such as a connection to a high, to a high, to a high profit, also play an important role. And also the, to obtain insight in their goals, experimentation make an idea where to build or work in a hypothesis rather, rather than the absolute, absolute truth. And also, I would I will to I would like to promote an environmental where students are free of experiment and also they can be able to explore. Uh, um. So thank you for talking about experimenting. I think they said uh, Thomas Edison did ten thousand and one experiment, and out of the ten thousand experiment, what was the result? Uh, people on the chat tell me what was the result of 10,000 experiments carried out by Thomas Edison and what was the outcome of the 10,001 experiment carried out by Thomas Edison, right? He did 10,000 experiments and there was something that happened. So I would like the, the people over there to tell us what actually happened to those 10,000 experiments. Was it a successful one? Was it a failure? And did he himself see himself as a failure as individual? Because he carried out 10,000 experiments and he discovered that he can actually not be able to achieve his result if he do it this way, right? And he see the positivity like harnessing, you know, the lesson along the way, not seeing himself like I failed. So um, that was another thing that people begin to do. When you do experiments, and you set up an atmosphere where people be able to challenge the status quo. Um, they might not get it right the first time, and they might do it the second time, not get it right, third, not get it right, but one day, they are going to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So experimentation is actually something that innovators keep at the uh, you know, front front of coming up with this uh, breakthrough. And so that being said, I think we'll have one more. We've talked about associating, we've talked about observing, we've talked about um, questioning, we've talked about um, experimenting, and now the final one is networking. So, Abdul. Um, so lastly, what we have on the list is networking. Network, networking, as the name implies, basically means building bridges, building connections with your peers, sharing ideas and insights, uh, giving analysis, um, having like minds, um, networking can actually be level of um, at the at the level of um, um, going further from that. Um, so um, it's very important. It's imperative to note that when you combine all these elements, you 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 tend to go forward from 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 what your uh, what you are after. Yeah. Thank you. So just to add more light, when you network with people. Able to ask about what they are doing and to see how that can you know, improve your own ideas. And um, if you nurture it very well, you only see diverse people when you attend big conferences that bring people together from different parts of the world or 
attend maybe courses in offshore, in big, big locations where we meet people from all aspects, from biology, from, you know, technical, science, you know, uh, medical, uh, military, and idea begin to emerge. You begin to see things differently, and um, you will now be able to shape your ideas. Uh, that being said, I'm happy to see that a lot of people actually got what happened to the 10,000 experiment, and also got what happened at the uh, 10,001. But uh, I promised I'm going to tell you the answer about chat GBT be an emerging technology at today. Um, the answer is no, it's not. It has emerged and it's going through the circle to go either um, stay with us or go extinct. So chat GPT, it's already uh, emerged technology. So it's no longer emerging, but the natural language processing is still emerging uh, because it evolves every day, it's been refined. Um, before now, they don't collect audio, right? As input, as a prompt, and now they can collect audio, they can collect image, they can collect anything as something that will trigger their output. So most of you have said yes, 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 but our answer is no, and also the opposite. A lot of people said no for the um, natural language processing, and now I'll say yes, because it's going through evolution. Um, I don't know, have you heard about 1G before? You know there was 1G actually. <laughs> there's 1G, there's 2G, and we had 3G. You know, we have 4G, we talk about 5G now, and the 6G is an emerging technology. It's still coming, and people are already doing experimentation on it, how it's gonna solve some of the problems that 5G comes with. And um, I think there's a working group uh, under IEEE that's construing this, um, looking at 6G, what are the things that they are going to bring on board? And battery evolution is still emerging tech because battery is being optimized, you know, holding this battery, and you see a very small battery, lithium ion battery, that is going to life, you know, stay very, very long in terms of durability because the electric vehicle needs to improve, needs to travel far, and stuff like that. So, uh, that being said, um, one thing I would like to mention is. The one G actually comes with ordinary just uh, voice. The two G comes with uh, text. That's when the SMS become anything, and people will be like, "Okay, I can send such message," and people will see it. Three G comes with uh, what do you call it? The videos, and videos are there. Streaming, you will be able to watch live event. You streaming them. Five G comes. Five G is possible, okay. and you come with virtual reality. It comes with augmentation reality, so many things comes with the 5G. In fact, we've not tapped 2% of the use cases of 5G in Nigeria. I don't know, um, have we tapped it yet? Uh, you know, we are still, uh, I think the 5G that we still have is still, you know, it's still 4 point, let me just say 4.5G, in the sense that we're looking to tap into, you know, uh, what we're actually looking to do. So I hope you will leave feedback on what you've learned today. So let's say we're looking for the wow effect from you. What is that one thing that you've taken away from today's class? So you can post it and let's know that thing that you don't know or you think you know, but today's lecture changed your perspective. So that one thing. So we're looking for that wow effect from you. So keep posting them and um, tell us that one thing that you've taken away from today's class. So innovators or innovation can be cultivated, right? So how do you think as an individual you can, looking at this five DNA that we've talked about, how do you as an individual cultivate that to become part of you, you know? They say practice make perfect. So how do you begin to, you know, cultivate this to become an innovator yourself? So colleagues, the floor is all yours. What do you have to say? Okay, there's a... Um there's a book called Innovators DNA. I read one interesting line in that book. Mm. And it says innovation is not all about cognitives. That when you change your behavior, you can become an innovator. Mm. So that line kept me thinking. Self-imposed um, 
behaviors that we don't question things. Okay, when things have been done this way for the past 400 years, and you think this is wrong, why are we not questioning? Mr. Blotiv uh, stated that Steve Job, it took Steve Jobs to question why computers must be in the lab. Today, we have computers everywhere in our presence as a result of his question. So, I think one of the, um, one of the biggest attributes of an innovator should be the act of questioning things. The act of not allowing the status quo to remain. Mm. When you see things, look at it. How do we improve on this? At least even 1% efficiency on this. So I think um, the questioning is an attribute that every innovator should have. Thank you very much. I won't argue less because this is the key thing that when you ask critical question or the right question. Yeah. So if you look and you sit in the room and you see someone asking question, that guy is getting to something. And um, they said you should always play devil's advocate. When people go this way, try to look at it from another window and be like, no. If they all go to the right, okay, what happens if I go to the left, right? Will I still get to the same destination? You know, these are the things that improve the algorithms that you see today. And you see things are getting better. Um, the uh, uh, mayors once said that is wow by the fact that one single computer is sold very, very expensive. So, and him, as an innovator, he decoupled the entire part of a computer. That's the, the founder of Dell. And he's going to add all the cost of all the parts of the computer. And you see that this part is less than a thousand. But why is that machine sold for six times the price? And that is the breakthrough of the Dell's model of computer. I don't know for those of you that have ordered computer directly, you can decide which part you want on your computer. So they kind of break down what you want on it. So they call it unbundlement. So if you want a computer with a 15-inch screen, you had it. The cost is going to you know, sum up. If you want a computer with um, 20 terabytes of hard disk space, you had it. And that will be like what you'll be paying for at the end of the day. So they were able to create a niche for themselves at that part because they created a model where they unbundle what they are selling as a whole. And you can either customize what you want to buy. So these are the things, that, you know, you keep asking questions and you'll be able to narrow it down. So um, Emmanuel did mention about questioning, ask what, what if, what if, what if, what not, what will happen. You understand? If you do it that way. So that, you know, brings up the inquisitive mind and people are able to do something. So if you're looking for people to employ, for example, look at those people that ask those devil advocate questions. Or if you're an executive of an organization, you go into your board meeting and just ask them, uh, what about if we don't have this? Uh, come out with your innovation. And sometimes they say constraint brings out creativity. And um, I don't know, um, you can share more thoughts, Ibrahim, I see you say yeah. <laughs> So if you are constrained and you need to do something, you know, how do you become innovative in that part? Yeah. Let's take it from the idea that uh, thinking outside the box, you don't just uh, maintain the status quo that if something is uh, if something has been done like this, there's a quote that if it's working, don't tamper with it. <laughs> don't tamper with it. Oh, this is how we've been doing it. <laughs> this is how we've been doing it. You don't tamper with it. You go online, you see images whereby uh, certain computers will be jumbled up in a network, and then wires will be 